Bueno, ya yeah, desde your boy fans. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys about something. For those of you that missed it last night, um, a lot's been going on. And I mean a lot. And that's something that some of you, I don't think, really understand. There's very few, like my best friend Andrea, who truly understands what I've gone through. And why I am the way that I am. And this is not only about why I am the way that I am. This is about why it's hard for me to be with anyone. Now, some of you guys might think that it's a cop-out. Believe me, it is no cop-out at all. Hey, if it's right, hey, Sam. But this live stream is also not only for those of you that don't know, but this is also for the ones that missed it last night. And this is basically, in general, why I am the way that I am and what made me this way. See, for those of you that don't know, I was born with one kidney and one and a half lungs. I wasn't supposed to live past birth. But yet, here I am, 27 years later, fighting for my life every day. Every day is a constant battle for me. But that's nothing for me. That's just an everyday thing for me. But what is a real battle is the battle for my mind, for my mental health, for my mentality. See, for those of you that don't know, from 2009 up until now, I've been through more hell than anyone can ever fucking ever imagine. A lot more. And it all started with the death of my best friend, David Stone King back in 2009 from a horrible drowning accident down at the gorge down here. Within a time span of nine years, I lost almost everybody that means everything to me. I, within a nine year time span, I lost most of them, literally, I lost most of the most important people to me in my life. On top of being mentally abused and verbally abused. You see, not soon after, like I said, in 2009, I lost my best friend, David, to a drowning accident. And in 2012, I lost one of my musical heroes, who also became a dear friend to me, Mitchell Adam Walker, from the heavy metal band Suicide Silence. And then in 2016, I lost three of the most important people to me in my entire life. Starting with my older brother, Bill, who died from lung cancer and pneumonia combined from smoking. And then later that year in March, I lost my childhood best friend, Stefan, due to a very bad brain aneurysm by random. And to make matters worse, I lose my brother and best friend from high school 
Zachariah Hussein to a murder that should have never happened. But what happened beyond that, along with that, nobody should ever have to deal with, which is mental abuse. See, within a nine year time span, for the last four years of that nine year time span, up to this point, I faced the mental abuse, being cheated on, lied to, And some of the worst events would follow within that last four-year time span. See, my ex Rebecca mentally abused me and verbally abused me for four years straight, nonstop, every day. And because of that, I lost some of my best friends in the world. Almost lost my family, and I almost lost myself. And let me tell you, the mental abuse that she put me through was the worst anyone could ever be put through. You guys think you know mental abuse? You don't know mental abuse until you've gone through what I've been through. Every day she made me feel like I was doing something wrong. Like I was at fault for something I didn't do. She was always blaming me for shit I didn't do wrong. She was constantly calling me names, bashing on me, whittling me, trying to tell me what to do, trying to tell me who to be, trying to make me somebody I wasn't, and trying to make me somebody I didn't want to be. And honestly, for the longest time, she had me so broken down that I didn't feel I could do any better. She had me so broken down mentally and verbally that there was a time where I felt like I wanted to end everything because of her. But thankfully, I had some very good friends that stuck by me and helped me got out, helped me get out of it very recently. But let me tell you something. Imagine going through four years of mental abuse. You guys think you have with the shit that you go through every day from work and stuff? That's nothing compared to what I suffered through for four and a half years on top of the death of those closest to me. The deaths of those closest to me just added on to that. Because let me tell you something, while I was being mentally abused, I wanted to talk to those that passed away so bad. I wanted to call them up and say, hey, this is what's going on, I need your help. But I couldn't. I had to fight my way through it on my own. I had to get through it on my own with no help. Up until the very end, when some of my best friends in the world came forward and helped me, I had no help. And as a result of what she did to me, I have a very hard time trusting anyone. I have a very hard time being with anybody because I'm always afraid. I'm always afraid that they're going to leave me or do something to hurt me again. But that's not the only reason why I'm not with anyone. Another reason is because of the fact that I refuse to drink, I refuse to do drugs, and I refuse to go out and party and do dumb shit. And you guys are probably thinking, well, why don't you drink? I mean, it's just you drink, and you, know, you can be responsible about it. Yes, that's true. But because of drinking and drugs, I've witnessed firsthand what those things can do. You see, I no longer have a relationship with my dad because of alcohol. 
he basically disowned me very recently. If you guys don't remember my post from a couple months ago, around 4th of July, he basically disowned me. And that right there, that killed me. My own dad, who served in the United States Army, who you would think had more respect, dishonored his branch of the military by disowning me and choosing drinking and drugs and getting high over a good, solid relationship with his own son. And just recently, months before that, last year, I lost one of my mentors in the music scene. I lost my best friend and mentor, who was practically my brother, legendary underground music artist Kota Oda, also known as King Kota for short. And I lost him to an actual, an accidental overdose of heroin. And then more recently, I lost my ex-bandmate and good friend Brian Hildebrand to a mixture of drugs because he chose drugs over the band. He died from a mixture of crack cocaine and heroin combined. But you guys are probably wondering what I go through on a day-to-day -day basis, what well, you're about to find out. You see, last year, my mom was hit by a car doing 30 miles an hour going down the side road here. She was getting off the bus, getting ready to cross the street when the car slammed into her and hit her and threw her 10 feet. And thankfully it her, it only threw her 10 feet. And she didn't break any bones or anything, but she does have severe problems now because of it. And you guys probably wonder why I don't go out and party or do anything. It's because I have a job to think about. My artwork is my job. I am an artist. I am a digital artist and a music artist on the side. My artwork is my job. My family is my job. You want to know what I go through on a day-to-day -day basis? Imagine waking up every morning, getting up every day, and seeing your own mom damn near in tears from not being able to walk very well up and down the stairs because she was hit by a car. That's why I can't work a regular job because I have to stay here at the house to help take care of my mom while our roommate works during the day doing maintenance for other people. Just think about that. Imagine if your mom, your dad, or your brother, whoever, got hit by a car and wasn't able to do very much. And every day, you had to wake up. You had to get up every day and help them with everything that they need help with. More than the average person. That's my life every day. Seeing my own mother in tears. Trying and trying to get well, trying to walk up and down the stairs, trying to do stuff that she normally doesn't have trouble with. Everyday activities for her have become a, a very daunting and heavy task. Just walking is hard. And you don't know what that's like to have to go through that to wake up every day and see your own mom in so much pain that she's almost in tears, wishing and hoping and praying that you could take it all away somehow, but knowing that you can't.
So you guys think you have it hard? You have no idea what hard is until you've been in my shoes and gone through what I've gone through and faced what I face every day without fear, without worry. Every day I wake up, I stare death in the face every fucking day, and I say, fuck you, I'm going to make it another day. Imagine being in my shoes, waking up, having to stare death in the face, knowing that that day or that night could be your very last time on this because you were born with one kidney and one and a half lungs. Imagine going through that every day and not letting that stop you and telling yourself that you're going to make it through it another day, that you're going to survive another day. Imagine waking up in the middle of the night Some mother come down those stairs in tears. Imagine four years of mental and verbal abuse, of being cheated on, being lied to, being mentally broken down to the lowest points anybody could ever go to and beyond that. And you guys wonder why I am the way I am, why I have trouble trusting people, why I'm so afraid to be with anybody, why I'm always so clingy, why I'm afraid to get hurt. There's a very good reason. And you know what's fucked up? Is a lot of people say that I need to grow up and get over it. But you don't realize, for those of you that are saying that I need to grow up and get over it, You don't realize what I'm facing. Imagine being with somebody and being treated right for the first time in your entire life and still feeling like you're doing something wrong, but you know you're not. Even though they're telling you that you're not doing anything wrong, you still feel mentally like you are. That's what I have faced for the last four and a half years. I'm sorry I don't drink. I'm sorry I don't smoke. I'm sorry I don't go out and party and get drunk and shit faced and everything like that. But I don't have time for a good time. The only thing I have time for is my job as an artist and to take care of my family. That's my job every day. And that's a full-time job. I would like to be with somebody who understands what I go through and is willing to stay with me no matter what. I would love to be with somebody who would actually treat me right. To be with somebody who loves me for me, not caring about my situation, caring about my situation but caring about me and who I am and showing me that it's going to be okay. I would love for that to happen. But what's sad is too many people these days are too stuck in this fucked up fantasy world that they're going to get with some rich guy that is going to have everything. I'm sorry I'm not rich. I'm sorry I bust my ass for a living doing what I love to do. I'm sorry it's hard for me to trust anyone when I'm with them. But you gotta understand something. That mindset is not my fault. That's because of my ex and everything that she did to me.
And I'm sorry I don't go out and drink and or anything like that, but you know what? I don't do that because I know what it's like to lose a family member, to be disowned by a family member, only because they'd rather shit sit on their fucking ass and get shit face drunk all goddamn day long. And I refuse, and I mean I refuse to do any kind of drugs. Because I've seen and witnessed firsthand what is to some of the most important people in my life. I've witnessed death firsthand. I've witnessed murder firsthand. I've witnessed some of my best friends in the military being carried off on a stretcher live while the news was rolling overseas. Some of my best friends give their lives for this country. Every day, they fought and died for this country. And you don't think I don't think about those people that I've lost every day? You don't think that I don't wish that I could be the way I was before I was mentally or verbally abused? Well, you're wrong. I would love to have my life back. And you guys sit there and say that you've got it easy? You think you've got it hard? Well, let me tell you something. You guys have it easy. You have it a lot easier than what I have. Because you know what? On top of all that, on top of witnessing some of the closest people to me being dead, some of my best friends from the military dying. Imagine dealing with fucking discrimination from record labels. Every day being told that you're not good enough. Imagine being bullied on social media every day of your fucking life. To the point where you want to end your own life. There were many times when I thought about that. Because of how bad things got. But you know something? It's people like Mitch Lucker. It's people like my two heroes. Mitch Lucker from Suicide Silence. And Chester Bennington from Lincoln Park. Who wound up becoming two very good friends of mine through social media, that I made it through it, that I survived. If it was not for Mitch or Chester's music, I would not be sitting here right now. I owe everything to them. I owe me surviving through bullying, getting out of the mentally abusive relationship I was in. I owe every waking up and fighting for myself to them and their music. And I know I talk about them a lot, but you know what? If you were in my shoes, you'd be saying the exact same thing. Because they were two of the greatest voices of our generation. And they will, and forever, always will be known as the true two kings of the metal and rock world. Mitch Lucker was the king of the metal world. And Chester Bennington, my fucking hero Chester, was the one true king of the rock world. And let me tell you something. I've had the utmost pleasure of sitting down and meeting them face to face. And let me tell you, they, they were two of the nicest people you could ever meet. And yes, I owe a lot to my best friends, like Sean Sands, my brother, and every single one of you who knows what I've been through and has been there since day one. I owe all of that to you, but I owe me being alive and not in my own life to Chester and Mitch. Because if it wasn't for them, I would have ended my life when I was in high school from being bullied. 
It's because of them that I escaped my mentally abusive and verbally abusive relationship with my ex Rebecca Anderson. It's because of them that I got my life back on track. And let me tell you something. When I heard about both of their deaths, I fucking lost it. I lost it entirely. Yeah, I, I lost it quite a bit when, when Mitch died, yes. But what killed me even more is one of my biggest influence in music and my musical, my number one musical hero, Chester, had died last year. That tore me to pieces because I not only saw Chester as a hero, I saw him as a dear friend because every Google Hangouts for the Lincoln Park Underground fan club they held, I was there for. Every single one of them, whether it was videoed or not, I was there because I not only supported their music, I supported their message. I supported what their music was about. And you guys think you have it hard. You don't know what hard is. And until you've lost as many people as I have and go through what I go through every day, and face what I face, you guys have it easy. You guys do not know hard. You sit there and complain about little things. While I'm over here every day busting my ass, doing my job as an artist, and helping to take care of my family. You guys think you have it hard? You have no idea what hard is until you've been in my shoes. And you guys sit here and wonder why I'm always upset, why I'm always down, why I'm always pissed off. There's a reason, a very good reason. I'm always upset and pissed off because it's not fair what happened to my mom. It's not fair that I sit here and suffer with the possibility of every day possibly being my last. But you know what? I don't sit there and complain about it. I sit there, I get up, and I do my job every fucking day without complaining. Every day. I wake up. I do my job as an artist. I do my job as a painter. And I help my mom around the house and help her out with everything that she needs help with without complaining. And like I said, I would have loved to be with somebody who would accept me for me. But nowadays, it just don't work like that. And not saying this to be mean towards all women at all, this is not directed at you guys in general. This is directed towards the ones who want a fake ass high life relationship. Wake the fuck up, bitch. It's never going to happen. And see, you guys always want this rich guy with a big fancy house, big fancy car. And you want a man that has it all without having to fight for a career. I'm sorry, but that's not reality. That's fantasy. A real man works his ass off like I do every day. A real man takes care of his family. A real man doesn't go out and drink or get drunk or high or go partying. A real man does his job every day without bitching, without complaining. A real man puts others first. A real man puts his family above all else. A 
a real man is not afraid to show his feelings like I did. Because when I'm with somebody, I am with them. I do not cheat on them. I do not lie to them. I am openly honest with them 100%. And I make sure to spend as much time with that person as I possibly can. That's what a real man does. But all you fake bitches want this style. Well, you know what? That fake ass lifestyle ain't gonna get you anywhere. You want a real, honest, true relationship? You want somebody that cares about you? Somebody who actually cares? Who understands what you go through? Talk to somebody like me. I don't judge by looks. I don't judge by appearance. The only thing I judge by is how I, that's all I judge by. That and if you are quite a bit older or quite a bit younger then yeah, depending on your age, I won't judge your age either. Like I said, I'm sorry that I am the way that I am, but you know what? I'm not changing for anyone. I will not change who I am for anyone. Now, fighting past my demons of being mentally abused, that'll go away eventually, but it's not an easy fight. Every day I fight for my mental health through that, and it's not, it's not easy. It's really not. It's one of the hardest things to do. But I wake up every day and I face it head on with no complaints, no excuses. And I don't give up. And that's another thing too about being with somebody. When I'm with them, I do not give up on them without a hell of a fucking fight first. Let me tell you the kind of person I am. If if I'm with somebody, they could smack me in the face, say what they want, do what they want to me. I don't care. But you know what? I'll still forgive them. Because I know deep down, they're going through shit too. And they're just lashing out in the wrong way. I'm the kind of person that's willing to forgive no matter what you do to me. You can sit there Call me names, call me ugly, call me short, call me whatever you want, do whatever you want. I don't care. But at the end of the day, I will still forgive you. Because that's the kind of person that I am. I am honest, I am open, I'm not afraid to show my feelings, and I bust my ass off doing my job as a painter every day, putting out the best artwork that I can. Not only for people to enjoy, but to make a living out of what I do best above all else. Something I've been doing since I was at the age of four. I've been drawing and doing art since I can hold a crayon at the age of four. And that's why I pursue my career as a digital artist so hard every day. Because it's what I love to do. It's what I'm passionate about above all else. Yes, I'm passionate about doing music, but not nearly as passionate as I am with my artwork. A real man works his ass off like I do every day and does what he can to help his family. 
So like I said, for all you women out there who want somebody real, who want a real, loving, understanding, caring relationship, find somebody like me. Give that person like me a chance. Because I guarantee you at the end of the day, you will not regret being with somebody like me because yeah, I may not have the best looks, but you know what? At least I'm faithful. At least I'm loyal. At least I work my ass off every day doing what I love to do as an artist. At least I'm man enough to take care of my family. Yes, I might not work a regular 9 to 5 job, but you know what? Fuck that 9 to 5 job. My job is taking care of my family and doing my art career. That's my job. And I'm sorry if it's not good enough for you, but you know what? If it's not good enough for you, then I don't know what to tell you. But let me tell you one thing. I will always put my family, my friends, and my artwork above all else. Because that's what a real man does. He puts his family first. He puts his job first. A real man puts his responsibilities like I do above all else. Yeah, I might not be perfect. Yeah, I make mistakes every now and then, but you know what? I'm only human. Humans make mistakes. And at least I'm man enough to own up to my mistakes. When I do something wrong, come out, I admit it, I say, hey, I was wrong, you know, I apologize. But at the end of the day, at least I'm faithful, and at least I'm loyal to that person. I don't go around sleeping with other women and doing dumb shit. That's not me. When I'm with somebody, I am with them no matter what. But also, on a good note, I would like to say congratulations to my brother, Sean Sands, and my soon-to-be sister-in-law, Christina, on their upcoming wedding in December, which I will try to vlog if I can, but I will be their best man. I will be Sean's best man for that wedding. That's going to be epic, bro. I cannot fucking wait. And Christina... I wanted to say welcome to the family, sis. I am beyond humbled and honored to have you as my soon-to-be sister-in-law. So welcome to the family, Christina. Love you, sis. Love you, brother Sean. Can't wait to be at that wedding, brother. It's going to be fucking amazing. And I also do want to give an even bigger shout out to somebody who has helped me a lot. And his name is Anthony Burns. And if you guys have not seen this man's videos, go to my friends list, look up Anthony Burns. And trust me when I say, when you watch his videos, you will you'll fall in love with his videos do help me every day. Like his videos help me a lot. So if you've not done so, go to his Facebook, check out his videos and share them around. Because they, they're really positive and they do help me a lot. In every, everyday life, they do help me. You know, they help me to be strong for myself, but for my family as well. So like I said, head over there, check out Anthony Burns. Check out his videos. Trust me, you won't regret it. But... You know, now I hope you guys realize just what I face every single day and what my life is like. 
and just how hard I actually have it. Because like I said, my life is not easy by any means. And most people think I have it easy. But the reality is I don't have it easy. And I hope you guys see that now. And I hope you really and truly do understand why I am the way I am. And why I do the things that I do every day. Well, that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. And I got to hop off here because I do have to get back to working on some artwork to post up into the shop. And if you guys don't have the shop link yet to my art shop, let me know and I will send it to you. Because I did update it last night. I just finished it up early this morning. So, yeah. With that being said, love you guys. And, you know, and if you do know anybody out there that is willing to give me a chance, let me know. With that being said, love you guys. Peace. And I do hope that you guys do have a good rest of the night or day, depending on where you're at in the world. Love you guys. Peace.